good morning. I'm just thinking about the size of things and about brains and about life and our place in the universe. I was watching a video a couple of days ago, I can't remember who made it, but one of the things that was said in it was a reference to how small human beings were in comparison to the wider universe out there. And over the last well, a few centuries, but certainly over the last few decades, our understanding of the size of the universe seems to have grown enormously. And with that, a corresponding sense of how tiny we are in comparison. There's a great scene at the end of the film, Things to Come, in H.G. Wells, based on the H.G. Wells story. And um, it's a beautiful scene right at the end where the two lead characters are looking out into space. It's set in the future, this particular part of it. And there's a rocket just gone off into space with, um, with these two young people in it. And uh, uh, one of the characters says, you know, this is, what are we to be? Are we just little animals, little animals living in this, on this planet amongst an immensity of stars? It's a great scene. And, you know, as I say, increases in our understanding of how large the universe is does tend to make us, just to tend to reduce our expectations of our understandings of who we are. And I certainly wouldn't want to argue for any kind of hubristic understanding or overestimation of who we are either. But at the same time, size isn't everything, as they say, is it? Size isn't everything. And that's really, I think that's particularly true of something like mind and consciousness and, you know, those things that make us human. And I've been trying to think about how to, to, to realise this for myself. And I'm kind of imagining a, a large database, a shimmering database, a huge database, which contains information about the universe and everything in it. A bit like the kind of database which I imagine would power a video game or a virtual reality simulation. Um, you know, those things are kind of worlds, or worlds exist, but ultimately all of the information about that world, the properties of that world, come from a database, just tables of information. So what if this world was a tabulated database of information? And there's columns to do with every property that, a, that the universe has. So there'd be a column which represents, for example, temperature, let's say. And um, the, the objects with the highest temperature in the universe would be the top of that table, and the objects with the lowest temperature, which I think is minus 273 degrees Kelvin, would be at the bottom of that table. And then there'd be one to do with, I don't know, hardness, let's say. So diamonds would be at the top, and whatever the softest substance would be at the bottom, the most gaseous substance, I guess. So, again, tables. And there'd be one a table to do with size, what's the largest thing, what's the smallest thing. And at the top of that table, I guess, would be the universe itself, however big that is. Huge, 14 billion light years. Is that how big it would be? 28 billion light Anyway, huge. Really huge at the top. And at the bottom, I guess, something like a quark or a boson or some subatomic particle with ourselves somewhere in the middle. That's to do with size. And, of course, within that table, we'd look, we don't look as small as a quark. But compared to the universe or a galaxy or a solar system, we'd look pretty diminutive as I say, halfway down that table at least. But then next to it, there'll be a column which is called something like complexity. Complexity. And there are measures of complexity, aren't there? And, uh, and it's to do with the amount of connections that are realisable within a particular um, structure. And not just connections, but also um, dynamic connections, connections that can be mobilised and, and to do certain things. Um, so there are measures for complexity. And in that scale, we would, I think we'll be at the top, or at least I think our brains will be at the top. The human brain, or brains more generally, is the most complex thing that has ever been discovered in the entire universe. Which isn't to say there isn't something out there that's as complex as a brain. But right now, the brain is by far the most complex thing. It has more connections, it has more dynamic connections, it's capable of more connecting systems and there are processes within it which allow those connecting systems to operate so it's the most complex thing capable of being in the most organized most at the highest number of organized variable states so and the universe would be itself would actually be quite low down because the universe is big but it's not that complicated I mean if you just think about the uh, something much smaller, the solar system, the sun and the, earth and the earth and the rest of the planets going around it. That's big by comparison to a human, but it's not complicated. It's entirely explainable by the laws of, by gravity really, by, you know, simple equations. You can predict the movements of all, this, all the planets and the, and the movements of the sun by relatively simple equations, which is why it's 
and has been and that's been possible for centuries. Even the even the galaxy, which is again mostly powered by gravity, but also a bit of dark energy and dark uh, dark matter shaping that and other forces as well. But they're not complex forces. You can predict what a galaxy is going to do, and the universe itself is probably even simpler than a galaxy. It's basically expanding. The, the, the same kinds of measurements that operate, it seem to operate at least, according in the way that, that predict what the universe is going to do, are the ones that predict what a balloon is going to do when you inflate it. It's a little bit more complicated than that because of dark energy, but it's not that much more complicated. It's relatively simple. The, the way that the universe is expanding is according to a simple, relatively predictable system there's not a multiple series of dynamic states it could occupy. There's not different, lots of different organisational possibilities available to it. But a brain, on the other hand, is capable of all those things. It's massively, massively more complicated than the universe. So it'd be right at the top of that column in that shimmering database of everything that ever happened and everything that ever can happen. So it might be small, but we are beautifully marked by complexity. Now, I don't know what that means. As I say, I don't think it should give us any sense of arrogance or hubris. But, um, but this sense of being tiny things in a large universe, I think, misses the big picture. Which is, I, think, I think we're just looking at the wrong column in the database when we think of that. Anyway, this is the uh, last day on Earth, isn't it? Apparently. Some people say. I don't think that's going to happen.